Hello, I'm Norm Rice, the newly elected mayor of Seattle. My friend Doug Jewett and I had a good campaign, but I won. Everybody voted for me. I'm the mayor. It's my ball. Obviously, that's a good feeling. It means I'll be called Mayor Rice. How are you today, Mayor Rice? Can I get you some tea, Mayor Rice? Here's your paper, Mayor Rice. I imagine I'll be invited to all sorts of fancy parties with lots of important people. Movie stars, congressmen. Maybe I'll even get to meet Bill Gates. I'll probably get a sizable discount on Seahawk tickets. And I'm guessing bad restaurant seats are a thing of the past for Mayor Rice. <laughs> but the most important thing is this is a victory for all of us, except Doug. It can hardly be called a victory for Doug, because you see, he's not the mayor. I am. Mayor Norm Rice. <laughs> can I get that in print down here? Yes! <laughs> this is Almost Live, a program that in the past has been plagued with chronic technical problems. However, we're pleased to announce that those problems have now been cleared up, and we're glad to introduce the host of our show, John Easter! be aware of this, but believe it or not, today is Washington's 100th birthday, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is it, our centennial, kind of the best kept secret in town. Also, the official mascot for the centennial is Bigfoot, which I think is appropriate because like the centennial itself, Bigfoot is an imaginary phantom-like thing whose existence is acknowledged only by fanatical followers. Still, it has been 100 years, and in those 100 years, we've made countless contributions as a state. We've brought the world Bing, Boeing, the Boz, and Bundy. <laughs> we've introduced the nation to politicians with funny names, Booth, Brock, Dixie, Slade, Scoop, and a man named Maggie. And musically, our legacy includes Louie Louie, Laser Floyd, and 100 years of junior Cadillac reunions. Yeah! <laughs> Historically, our proud state is rich with landmark events. Here are just a few. In 1868, the PI is founded. 1869, Emmett Watson writes his first anti-California <laughs> column. 1890, WSU is established. 1920, the first WSU graduating class. 1967, I-5 is completed, making it possible to drive nonstop from Everett to Tacoma, although no one has yet found a reason to do so. In 1978, the Huskies win the Rose Bowl. Thousands of UW students drink heavily and celebrate. 1989, thousands of UW students drink heavily. There, now, don't you feel proud? Don't you feel proud? We do. And to make sure you don't miss a minute of this, the most important day in Washington state history, we've got a clock that will count us down to midnight and our 100th birthday. As a matter of fact, we've got a live shot from the gala centennial celebration down at Pike Place Market. I'm sure it's packed down there, but maybe can, can we get a word from... Uh... Okay, well, uh, maybe everybody else is looking for parking, okay? Uh, but we'll check back at the end of the show. Okay, that's the gala celebration going on down there. Gala centennial celebration. Anyway, there are other things on our minds uh, besides the cen centennial these days. You know, we've discovered that there are a lot of rude people in our city, so to help this problem, here is another episode of Mind Your Manners with Billy Kwan. It's time for Mind Your Manners with Billy Kwan. Today's episode, Enter the Doggy. Come along now. Heel. I said heel. Come on. Come on, let's go. Hurry up, come on, come on. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Your dog has followed the footpath and my shoe is wrong. Doggy, huh? Well, give the dog a bone. Okay, stay with us. We've got a great show, and we'll be right back. You are important. You need to stay informed. But most newscasts just add to the stress of your daily life. You need Calm. K-A-L-M Radio. Easy listening news. A tractor trailer got a little off balance on I-5 today. 17 cows expired. Poor cows. Poor innocent cows. You know, it's sad, but look at it this way. It could have been 18 cows. There are certain anxiety-causing words you will never hear on Easy Listening News. Words like killed, maimed, and disemboweled. Seahawks were not winners yesterday, but they weren't losers either. It was another valuable learning experience for our boys in blue and green. As E.T. would say, ouch. But remember, there are more important things than football, like the love of a good dog or a child's smile in the rain. You'll hear all of the news you need delivered tenderly and in its proper context by people who care about you. In the Middle East today, non-peace continues in Lebanon. Never mind, you know, it's the same old story. When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? Some more words you'll never hear on KALM EV listening news include Laceration, Lance Boyle, and Growing Toys. On our highways, traffic is very heavy this morning, very threatening to your personal space. Just take a deep breath, let out on the clutch, and smile at the person in the car next to you. That's it. Easy listening news. Hear it from a friend at KALM. I love you, darling. And I love easy listening news. Well, welcome back to our coverage of the Washington Centennial Celebration. We're counting down the minutes till we drop the big salmon off the Space Needle. Right now, we thought it'd be a good time to go over the other centennial events happening all around the Evergreen State. In Vantage, it's the 100th year celebration of people passing through town on the way to Wazoo. In Yelm, they're having the crystal-powered veggie roast and t-shirt tie-dye festival. The D.B. Cooper Memorial Dash for Cash is on again. The Washington State Board of Education salutes nine decades of statehood. Kittitas County celebrates 100 years of statehood and 25 years of electricity. And in Tacoma, they're having the Hilltop Cop Car Watch and Fun Run. Okay. <laughs> Those are some of the exciting events for our centennial celebration, but we also have some exciting souvenirs. Let's welcome our first guest, Centennial Souvenir Coordinator, Barney Duwamish. Barney, let's see some of these great knickknacks of yours. 
Well, John, first, we've got the salmon on a stick. Oh, these are great. They're yeah. a lot of fun. You can make them swim upstream. They're fun for the whole family. Great for the centennial. What oh, else yeah. Have, Barney? Now, you know, our mascot for the centennial is Bigfoot. Right. We've got a yeah. lot of Bigfoots here. This, I think, is going to be our biggest seller. This is a Bigfoot made of Mount St. Helens ash. So you see, we get both of the Washington gimmicks in one product. Wow. That's great. You mean that actually contains genuine ash from Mount St. Helens? Well, I guess so. I mean, you know, when the mountain blew up, the ash went all over the state. I mean, there's bound to be some in there. Yeah. yeah. Now, this Bigfoot face is the authentic Bigfoot face. At least, we're, we're pretty sure it is. It just turns out that, that the people that he reveals himself to are pretty poor photographers. Yeah, okay. All right. Now, everyone should have his own Washington State flag. They oh, come yeah. in all sizes now. Those are beautiful. Now, how did they come up with the design for the Washington State flag? Well, I think they just took a green piece of paper and traced a dollar bill. Oh. But uh -huh. you can tell the dollar bill must have been a uh, uh, flip side because, you see, George Washington's big hair yeah. on the flag is on the other side from the dollar bill. That's how oh. you can tell them apart. Yeah, okay. Well, what's on the other side of the flag. On the reverse, it's pretty much the same, except it says, not Guinea saw fo etats. So oh. it's really not that great yeah. on the other side. Yeah, you wouldn't want to hang it from that side. No, but no. I'll tell you what's cool. No matter where you are in the room, his eyes follow you. Oh, it's wow. kind of eerie. That's pretty interesting. Well, that's very interesting. Thanks for being here. But as we count down the minutes, I think it's appropriate now to go to the official centennial historian. Uh, please welcome Ed Richland. Ed, this must have been just an exciting day in Washington 100 years ago. Was there some sort of a big battle like the Alamo when Washington became a state? Was it like that? Well, not really a big battle. Basically, uh, President Harrison signed a piece of paper. Oh, a piece of paper. It was really exciting. An exciting piece of paper. Good, OK. Um, but did we, did we battle proud in the Civil War? Were we, did, did we do proud battle in the Civil oh, War? Oh, yeah. We well, yeah, oh, well sure. of course, we weren't a state then. But if we had been, we would have done great proud battles. I don't know what side we would have fought on, but we would have been proud. Yes, we would. Don't you think we would have been proud in Washington? Yeah. Now, what about the early settlers of Washington? Did they get along well with the Indians? Oh, yes, very well. We signed a couple of treaties with them, in fact, that allow the Indians to sell us fireworks every 4th of July. Oh, OK. See, it works out both, okay, you know, for both great. ways. Is there any other important historical events that happened in Washington that you think people should be more aware of? Uh, maybe the Great Seattle Fire. Sure, the Great Seattle Fire, yeah. See, the whole city burned to the ground, yeah. and they built on top of the rubble. Now, if that hadn't happened, we wouldn't have the Seattle Underground Tour. Oh, yeah. That's really interesting, yeah. yeah. Uh, has anything happened in the last hundred years in Spokane? No. Uh. <laughs> well, what's the latest event of his historical significance that ha has happened here in the Evergreen State? Oh, that's a fascinating question because historians are just starting to recognize the fact that Washingtonians invented the wave. Oh, right, the wave, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's really exciting. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. OK, so we did that here. Well, what, what's, what's in the future for our state? Oh, it's a great future, John. But I tell you, look for a name change. Really? A name change? Why is that? Well, Washington, D.C. is always confused with our great state of Washington. Yeah, yeah. So the legislature, much like they did with the license plates, uh -huh. is thinking about changing the name. Well, what kind of names are you guys thinking of? Well, a couple have been tossed out. North Oregon. North Oregon. <laughs> huh? Uh, awesome Land. Awesome Land. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. And Kirsten. Kirsten. Well, it's just a really nice name, John. Kirsten. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I could see that. Yeah. I've got to say, though, the inside track goes to AAA number one best state. Oh. See, that'll put us right at the top of the list. And the, we don't have to be down with Wyoming and West Virginia anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a real good idea. Well, that's fascinating, fascinating. Thank you for being here, and thank you for being here, Barney. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, look, I want everybody to go out and get your souvenirs for the coming centennial. What do you mean? I mean, you know, for the centennial year coming up. Well, Barney, th this is the centennial year. This has been the centennial year. There's only 15 minutes left in the centennial year. Oh, like 89 to 89. Yeah. Oh, shit, I didn't hear a thing about it. <laughs> well, uh, what am I going to do with all these Harrison Bigfoots? Well, um, Idaho is having their centennial next year. Maybe they would like him. Idaho, huh? Yeah. Well, maybe. I mean, you know, he's white. Yeah. OK, well, that's all, that, that's all we have time for. So stay with us, because we're going to be counting down to the big celebration. We'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, we're back.
back. You know, people often ask, how is it that we develop the ideas that you see on Almost Live? Well, it's an arduous process that starts at the beginning of the week and culminates on show day. Not many outsiders ever see the creative process at work. Here's a rare chance at an inside look. Hi, I'm Kevin Seal for Inside Information. This week, we'll go behind the scenes at Almost Live. We'll see how a comedy sketch goes from an idea in some writer's head to your living room. And we'll see it from the inside. This is the making of Duckhead Guy. Okay, why don't we just go around and see what Each member of the Almost Live staff fights vehemently for his own funny bit. Duckhead Guy. <laughs> Producer Bill Staten and host John Keister decide to go with Bob Nelson's piece, Duckhead Guy, a funny yet touching piece about a man who must don a duckhead in order to find love. <laughs> Keister and producer Bill Staten watch a progression of actors audition for the role of Duckhead Guy. After an hour and a half, though, they remember that there's no money in the budget, and they decide to use a staff member, Bill Nye. Hey, I'm Duckhead Guy. What do you think? Oh, God. I felt so restricted as the science guy and speedwalker, but Duckhead Guy is truly a multifaceted character. And I find the role very exciting, but of course, at the same time, very challenging. Quiet on the set. Duckhead Taping had been going well for over an hour when an argument cut. broke out over seeing where Duckhead Guy is supposed to throw a fit. Cut, cut, cut. Bill, you gotta be scared. You're flying for your first time. You're a little duck. You're flying with wings, and you're scared. Okay, no, Can't what? you get this straight? I'm the actor here, okay? Let's review, all right? I'm a duck. Ducks fly, all right? Eventually, photographer Mike Voidson and I work out their differences, and the shoot is finished, much to producer Staten's pleasure. To us, Duckhead Guy represents a new direction, uh, a new step in comedic sensibility, as it were. I can see Duckhead Guy going on to become, say, the Conehead of the 90s. Gentlemen, I'm sorry, but... Uh, Much to everyone's alarm, events take a tragic turn. Uh, An executive had flown out from New York to tell the staff of Almost Live not to run Duckhead Guy because of threatened boycotts against the network by environmental groups. For writer Bob Nelson, it's a bitter end to what started as a very promising week. Obviously, it hurts. I felt that Duckhead Guy was a good social commentary on the current state of the economy. But I'll recover. You got to keep chasing your dreams. You know, maybe someday Duckhead Guy will become a cartoon. Well, it's been a fascinating week here behind the scenes at Almost Live. Seeing the kind of joy, the pain, the sorrow, the hope that goes into the making of a piece like The Duckhead Guy gives me a newfound respect for comedy writers. They're not just a bunch of funny guys cracking jokes. They're poetic souls, longing to be free, yearning for better jobs and dental benefits. For Inside Information, I'm Kevin Seal. So long. Okay, well, stay with us. We'll be right back. Almost Live Training Films presents Buying Beer and Chips Before the Game. Part 1, Getting the Cash. For quick shopping trips, it's smart to use cash. But watch out for other smart people. There's only so much cash in those machines. Get yours first. Part 2, Entering the Store. Forget those little baskets. They're too small. Get a cart. Test it out. Reject any with wobbly wheels. Find one that rolls smooth and even. Just to make sure, lubricate the wheels. <laughs> Part three, getting the stuff. You are here. The beer is here, but it's a busy aisle. It's faster to detour through the mouthwash and deodorant aisle. Take the turns quickly. Stay fixed on your goal. Accelerate, but remember, always steer with both hands. You've reached the beer section. Make a decision. The best choice is beer with a handle. Remember, avoid snacks that have caused you to barf in the past. Plain <laughs> chips are the safest, and salsa, any kind. It all tastes the same after a couple beers. <laughs> Part four, the checkout. Sprint as fast as you can to the cash register, but watch out, elderly blockage. Jettison the cart for the final stretch. Always maintain forward movement. Now you've reached the check stand. 
But watch out for these dangers. Paying with a check. A five-minute delay. Coupons. A ten-minute delay. Looks safe, but hold it. There's a purse. He's waiting for his wife. Part five, exiting the store. Forget ecology, plastic bags are faster. You're on your way, but wait. Let another customer get ahead. He'll get nabbed by the nut with the petition allowing you to slide by. And now it's on to the game. This has been a successful trip to the market. Happy birthday, Washington, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Promotional consideration for Almost Live provided by Pizzeria Pagliacci, featuring traditional and gourmet pizza by the slice. Pizzeria Pagliacci, rated Seattle's best pizza. Promotional consideration also provided by your local Coca-Cola bottler. Happy Centennial.